a clip, Jim. No, I feel like Daryl Walter at Bristol. Like, boogity, 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 boys, let's go racing. What do you say? Skaliski. Am I getting it right? Skaliski. Because I'm going to have to say that. It's something. Skaliski? I'll get it. Skaliski. Welcome to episode seven of Ben Busters. We're here in the Ben Busters newsroom today. We're gonna to talk about some pre-harvest predictions. Today we're gonna to be talking about FFT, what it is and how we're using it on our farm. So on our farm, Doug, we've been using FFT to kind of as a management tool, um, helping us manage our crop throughout the growing season, help make the best management decisions we can and uh, also have the higher, highest ROI, not only just trying to beat you in yield, but we're trying to have, you know, trying to make more money at the end of the day. So, I mean, that's one of the tools we're using and how we're using it, I guess, is what you can fill in on because you're using the same tool. Absolutely. And kind of the, I'll go through a couple of reasons of why we use FFT. One thing for me is the amount of data that we put into FFT to get the results that we want. You know, we, we put in everything from soil test values, soil structure maps, hybrid information, planning date, fertility. And the thing with, with Winfield and FFT is through their answer plot, they're able to track all the response scores for all these hybrids that we utilize, and those are preloaded into the tool as well. I feel, Jonah, you know, we talk about FFT a lot, and I don't, I don't know if we give it enough credit. I feel it's one of the best crop modeling tools that we have on the market um, and access to as far as managing, watching um, two main nutrients for us, nitrogen, potassium, and also giving us that water stress. You know, watching my crop through the year, I was using the nitrogen stress piece to make my side dress decisions and try to trigger when that crop was going to see nitrogen stress. You know, now we, in July, I know you were looking at FFT a lot and you were seeing moisture stress. Yep. We've kind of eliminated that with some of these rains we've had right now. Now we're seeing a little bit of potassium stress. I know on some of our soils, some of those heavier soils, it may be just a tick low in potassium. One thing too, Doug, with that, we overlook sometimes or, you know, I know you and I use it, but other people don't think about it as much. With FFT, it gives you a scenario. You can run scenarios to see what you're the most profitable on on side dress. Just because you can push out 250 or 300 bushel corn, is it profitable for your acres? Absolutely. And that's one thing that's really neat about FFT is how we can run these scenarios. Now, you know, in, in the game you and I are playing, you know, sometimes we kind of throw out the ROI. We don't really think about that too much, but that gives you a chance to look at the ROI of those acres. You know, are we having 350 corn? Are we having $4 corn? Are we having $3 corn? We can run all these scenarios, not only and tell us what the biggest return on investment is, the time of application, when we should be putting it in there. Yeah, the one thing you talk about the scenarios and on one of our farms that we have in FFT, it was better for us to pull back 15 units of nitrogen and put it on six days ahead versus waiting. We still got the same return on bushels, but we had a higher return on investment. One of the things we ran into when we were looking at this tool this summer is we saw some potassium stress coming up late season. Yeah. And we were knew we were making the application with urea when we were side dressing, so we went ahead and threw some potash in with that mix. Um, obviously, without that tool, we wouldn't have known that because based off of the historical things we've done on the farm, the soil samples, everything else, we didn't see a need for extra potash, but the tool showed us that we did. Absolutely. We were going to do the same thing, but just weren't able to get it done. We were seeing just a small... Um, small response to that potassium. So we were going to run some potassium thiosulfate with a little bit of 28 there late season. One feature we don't talk about enough on the FFT tool is like the yield prediction part of that. You know, Absolutely. with today's, you know, the grain markets where they are, you know, we're seeing a little bit of a rally in the grain market. I get on FFT and I kind of look at what it's predicting as far as my farms. It helps me make better marketing decisions too now and also helps me make storage decisions and, you know, the bin space we have available. So FFT is like a whole farm tool that we can utilize for not only just managing the crop but helping us market the crop that we're growing today too. Absolutely. That is one great point that you bring up. It's kind of helped me as far as work with my grain marketer and figure out whether I need to move X amount of bushels this fall, how many I'm going to have to store and things of that nature. So. With today, we're going to actually kick it out to the field to Katie and Amanda. They're going to do some yield checks for us. Good. Thanks, Ben Busters. I'm Amanda. And I'm Katie. And we're out here in one of your FFT fields taking some hand yield checks. So 
Uh, to get an estimated yield, we're counting kernels around by kernel length, multiplying those numbers with your population, which is 34,500 for this field, and then dividing by a special factor de depending on the size of the grain. So if it's average size kernels, we divide by 90. If the kernels are a little larger, we might divide by 80, or if they're very small, we divide by 100. So Katie, what is your ear? I have 18 around by 37. And I've got 18 around by 35. So what does that work out for in our yield equation? Yeah, so for an average bushel, we have around 248. Um, depending on the kernel size, though, it could get up to 280 bushels. We'll add that equation here at the bottom of the screen in case any of you viewers want to take your own hand yield checks in your own fields. And back to you, bin busters. Thanks for that information, Katie and Amanda. It's really nice to talk about those hand yield checks as one way of gauging what we're doing and also going back through these predicted yield distribution maps in FFT and talking about the predicted yield and the max yield and what that actually means. Joni, you want to talk a little bit about the predicted yield and the max yield that we see in FFT and what that description is? So yeah, we can talk a little bit about that, Doug, but you know, predicted yield is obviously across all the acres that we have enrolled in that field or farm or whatever. Yeah. Um, so like on mine, you know, it's not a great number. I'm showing 196. It's kind of where I've been all season. You know, for the season we've had, I've been pretty happy with it. I'm not complaining. Um, my max yield, you know, it's kind of spiked recently. Some of the corn that we've really managed on this farm is really showing that upper end. And, you know, we're at the 246, 250 range. So when we talk about the predicted yield and max yield and FFT and what that means. So the predicted yield is what this is projecting this field to average. The max yield is what this field should average without any added stresses. And with that, it gives us a, a a gap figure and a loss figure. So gap figure right now on mine is zero and loss is zero. So that means I give this field everything that it had. The gap bushels, and I know you and I were looking at them early season, and we, we noticed we had some bushels that were hanging out in that gap. And those are bushels we can go back and get by doing some different management practices. Lost bushels, it's over. You know, we've missed the boat on those, whether it be a early season nitrogen stress or something like that. You know, but gap bushels, we can go back and get a hold of those and bring them back into the equation. So when you were talking uh, the other day there about your predicted yield distribution maps, what were you seeing on it, seeing any changes? So all season long, they had been pretty consistent, you know, here late season as we get into, you know, the crop maturing, getting closer to that black for layer time frame. You know, we're seeing that change a little bit. Um, you know, the yield has kind of changed across the field. Typically it had been pretty consistent, a few bad spots, which we knew we had. Um, but today we're seeing a bigger, bigger variation in that field than we had before. You know, our max yield has kind of jumped up, I guess you could say, but the bottom end has fallen down some too. Um, some of those areas we knew we had some nitrogen stress in because of the waterlogged soils early on. Um, they're starting to really show up now late season. Absolutely. So as, as a whole farm average, what's the tool predicting for you right now? Because I really, I'm dying to know. Well, Doug, I'm just not going to tell you <laughs> because I still want to beat you. Yeah, yeah we're going to have to disclose that information. But, you know, looking at mine and seeing what I've seen and tracking it through the year, because when we started planting corn, you know, and once we were up to our first cidress application, I know you and I, you know, we had breakfast a couple of times and we weren't happy with what we were seeing in FFT. And I was thinking, you know, we're doing all this extra management. You know, I'm not going to be super proud of 220 bushel corn. And that's what we were predicting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, mine right now, the max has always been right around that 195 to 200. Yeah. And it's shooting right around that same area right now. And it's really cool for me to go back into FFT and go and play the whole season of that predicted yield yep. distribution map from start to finish and see how this crop has evolved. You know, and you can kind of check it with where we've made those side dress applications or uh, late season or even our fungicide application, seeing a nice response there because this yield is going to be based off the NDVI maps. Yeah. And a healthy, healthy corn crop is going to give us a really good NDVI map. Exactly. Another part of the FFT tool that we sometimes overlook too is a prediction, maturity prediction. You know, with a heavy livestock base in our area, it helps these guys, you know, better time their silage chopping. And then also, along with the grain side of it, you know, it helps us be prepared for the harvest season ahead. Absolutely. You know, going in and looking based off your hybrids maturity and the weather we've had with the rainfall we've had and the growing degree units we've accumulated throughout the season, it, give us, it gives us that predicted maturity date so we can plan around that. You know, you like to talk about the livestock side of things. I know you give me a lot of flack, but I, I use it to plan my hunting trips, Jonah. 
And, and honestly, that's great because, you know, <laughs> we joke about that on your hunting trips, but, I mean, it gives us a real-time scenario of when you need to be out there looking at things, when we're Absolutely. getting close. So we're going to go ahead and challenge all you viewers to go ahead and submit your own hand gill checks into the comments to see if you're beating the bin busters. Hey guys, Matt Harbage here again, on the move, on the go, solving problems in the midst of trying to feed the world. Hey, I had a message come in here. I'm walking out to this problem I told you I'd tell you about. Message come in from a viewer from the Ben Busters channel. They said, hey Matt, you work at Heritage we saw. What in the world? You're pretty good. Why in the world don't Doug and Jonah invite you on their show? I said, you know what, I don't know. I'll tell you what. I would be more than happy to come on your show, help you guys out, get your ratings up a little bit. And I challenge a Michelle Egley if she's cool enough, if she can do it. I think we ought to be on Ben Busters, help you guys out a bit. Hey, here's that problem. Brother Luke, putting 300 pounds of down pressure on, he's tearing uh, closing wheels off the planter. I'm gonna have to let him know about that. All right, well, see you guys later. Update you here soon. So let's kick this party off. Shake, Shake and bake. bake. So now we're here at the Ben Buster Speedway racing to high end yields. Who's our next challenger, Jonah? Harborough's farm. Wait, looking way ahead. Oh, pff, they don't see the chance. They're behind us, Doug. I've been looking at Matt Harbage in my rear view mirror all season. If he's gonna play in this game, he better get a bigger engine than next year. Harborough's farm doesn't even see any chance. Hey, Doug, let's pull up their FFT real quick. Let's look, see if we can get it in. Wait, 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 wait. Do you even, oh, they're not no, in. No, it's right here. Oh, you found it? They're in here? Oh, wait. Oh, no fields. No fields. Oh, what? come on. Those guys are a joke. Oh, man. They don't even know how to manage a crop, do they? It's ridiculous. It is. You know what? This, hey, what we'll do. Yeah? We're going to race right over to Hard Bros Farms, have a little chat with them. Let's do it. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. <laughs> 